All right, guys, it's the end of the week. And throughout this week, we've been working on a 2048 game. We started out with the easy stuff, making the main loop that was mentioning functions that we filled in the super simple ones. Like if there's a 2048, it says you win and things like that. And then on the medium one, the second step, we did the slightly more complicated ones, the functions that were like six or seven lines where it would put a random number in a spot after each turn. 90% of the time it gives you a two and 10% it gives you a four, except at the beginning you get a couple of random twos. And then we started in the next few steps working on the actual core movement of the game, which is when you push a direction, everything shifts. And if it hits a wall or a different number, it stops. And if it hits the same number, it combines. And that took a few steps. We had to, or we decided to make one direction and then rotate the board. So if you're going to go left, we just have it. If you're going to go up, we rotate move left and then rotate back and it will have the result of having moved up. But I think that was easier than actually moving it up. We'll see how it goes. Today I want to put a cherry on top and finish with a few little things. Um, I'm going to hit copy on this guy and I'm going to say final steps because this will be the final steps for this version, we will do more later, for example, some graphics and some better input. But for this text-based uh, instantiation of the game, I think this will be everything we need. The game in its current state, just to pick up where we left off, looks pretty good. And if you hit W, it goes up, A, it goes left, and so on. And all these are, as far as I can tell, following the rules, you get the combos and they move correctly, and we're not having any uh, weird surprises, except for two that I'll talk about in a second. But one thing that somebody mentioned to me, and I thought this was nice, is that we should, instead of having the board appear under the previous state and just have this long uh, printout in the console, we don't need the past few steps. We don't need that. So it'd be nice to clear that board and just have one thing all the time. And so we haven't used this, but it's a nice, simple two line thing that we can get into. So if you import something called OS, there's a module in Python called OS, which is kind of a miscellaneous bag of different things. It will allow you to do stuff related to the quote unquote operating system, which is not real in our code HS. Uh, environment. We're not going to do anything with Windows or whatever, but the uh, clearing of the console is one of those things that we're talking about. So let's say that in the display board function, I'm going to hit os.system and then the uh, keyword for that is clear, I believe. So that means it'll do exactly the same stuff, but refresh what we see every time, which looks a bit nicer. And then you don't have to like look down. And it is a bit flickery. You know, we don't get a perfectly smooth uh, missing zero frames experience, but that's all right. It looks pretty good and I'll go with that. Now, the next thing is we have two problems that I think can be uh, fixed in one fell swoop, which is over here when we get the move, we let them do illegal moves. And what I mean is that in 2048, sometimes if you hit a direction, nothing happens. Like if the left column is full 
and the others are blank and you hit left, nothing would actually change, right? None of those combine, nothing happens. And it doesn't do the rest of the turn. It doesn't, obviously it doesn't need to check if you win or lose. And it doesn't add a new random number because you didn't do anything. It was like that didn't count. And it doesn't say that. It doesn't pop up like invalid input. It just doesn't respond. So my version is wrong in that it doesn't follow that. If we can engineer one of those. Well, here, here it is. If I hit left, nothing should happen. But in fact, something will, which is we get a new guy over there. So that's bad. If we're trying to follow the rules, um, it wouldn't. Now, you could say, well, hey, this is punishment for the people, uh, you know, thoughtlessly pushing a direction that's not a legal move, but we'll fix that. And then the other thing that people have pointed out to me is that checking for losing, this is not quite what we want because this says if everything is full and there are no blanks, then you lose. But sometimes it's full and you still have moves you could make to combine some twos, for example. And then you're still probably going to die in the next two or three turns, but this is a little bit off. And the interesting thing about those two problems is that they're both based on the same idea, which is we need to see if a move is legal. When we ask them to move, we can check if that was actually doing anything or if they're stuck. And when we're checking to see if they lose, we can see if they're stuck in all directions. And in that case, they're dead, whether or not there's a zero, right? So let's try that. Now it turns out it's not going to be easy because I tried this a minute ago and it was killing me. So let's do it though and let's see what happens. Uh, I'm going to make a function called check stuck, which is going to say, does this work? Can you move in a certain direction? So it's going to need to have the board and the move sent to it. And we're going to say, does anything happen if you try to move in that direction? So it's my uh, attempt, uh, what I tried a minute ago and it wasn't getting it, was to say, hey, we're going to make a new board that tries to move. And if it's the same as the current board, that means there wasn't anything. This is actually... Um, a very reasonable idea and then it didn't happen. So if I say board, I uh, know the function is called shift board. And then I say, are they the same? So it says, okay, we're going to make a new state like a possible future which is if we moved in that direction and then compare that to the current state, which is, is anything different? If nothing is different, then that means we couldn't actually move in that direction. Therefore we're stuck. And let's put that in to the spots that would use it. So one would be right here. On the get move, we're going to say while move uh, or while check stuck board and move, which means the get move function needs to have the board, which means before we forget, let's send it on down the line. Then while we're stuck, we got to ask again. We got to say, uh, no movement in that direction. I'll put a try again. And then I'll elaborate on this one because it isn't special anymore. Um, yeah, that's fine.
So we would ask again. And theoretically, that works. And then down here, let's put it in the check lose, which is to say, um, for we need to check all the directions. Like, can you move in any direction? So for I in range four, or no, not range. We're going to do the WASD. We don't even need separate quotes. We can do all in one. And instead of calling it I, I'll call it move. Uh, if check stuck board move, then we're not sure, right? If you check that we're stuck in one direction, well, maybe we're fine in another. So we're not actually looking for stuck. We're looking for not stuck. If we're ever not stuck, we're fine. We didn't lose, which is the theme of this function. So if we get through all those, then we're true. We're losing. Okay. And that seems very reasonable. As far as I would guess, it would be airtight. But earlier I tried this and it didn't work. So let's see. If I go up, it works. Up, right, right. And these are cool, except whenever I hit left, it thinks I'm stuck, even when I'm not. See right here, this too should be able to move over. And it's not thinking it can. So that's interesting. We have to do some testing, or we have to look at the code and just galaxy brain theorize what's going on. So the A is the one that's bad, and it's the one that is giving a wrong answer, not an error in the sense of like the program crashing, but a dumb response that it shouldn't give. And you might think, well, hey, A is the one that doesn't rotate. If you remember when we originally uh, came up with the idea for the shifting, I thought, hey, this is going to be the hard part. And it was the hard part. So let's only do it for one direction and then rotate the board to accommodate that. However, something's going on where now A doesn't work the way we thought it would. And the rotation is doing something for those other guys that it's not doing for A. So as a test to see if that's a good theory, well, I'm going to have it rotate and back completely uselessly, but just to have it push through that machine and see what happens. So I'm going to go rotate clockwise. <laughs> At this time, will the students that have turned in their permission slips to go on the construction field trip? At this time, they need, need to be dismissed to go down to the construction room. Construction field trip, too. Thank you. And now this works. This test, currently, it's telling me I can't move left. And it's right. I can't move left. But if we move things around, then yes, we're good. And it's not giving me that false positive that it was earlier. So something about putting it through this step of rotating is making it work even though that's stupid. There's something about the rotation that's helping or something about not that's not. And I'm actually not sure yet. I'm not finished. My guess is that it's two things. One, the type. Maybe the type of variable is off. Earlier there was a part where I had a list of tuples, but I thought it was a list of lists and it kind of messed up. 
but I actually don't think that's the case here. I think it's probably something uh, called name shadowing, where when you use a name in one spot and you use a name in another spot and you think they're separate, but they're really talking about the same guy. Um, in a bunch of functions, I've used board and move, and theoretically, they're only in that universe of this function, and then it's a totally separate board and move in the universe of the next function. But since they're using the same name, we're not quite sure, right? And this is the first time where that really matters because doing that check stuck function is moving stuff provisionally. It's like, oh, we're, we're moving this to see what would happen, but we're not really trying to change the core of the main board. So earlier when we were moving stuff, if you accidentally moved the version in another part of the program, you might've been let off the hook. But now if we're moving this guy and we're saying, oh, just, just in this little world, just in this imaginary test, maybe you're moving it and you accidentally move it elsewhere and you didn't know it. So I think that's what's happening. Since I used the word board here and I also used the word board here and here, and maybe it's gotten loose. Maybe it's leaking from one function to another somehow. We got to check into that. The code HS doesn't have, as far as I know, it doesn't have a whole lot of great um, debugging and like line by line stuff, but we'll figure it out. I'm gonna end this video here because it's gonna be super long, but I can tell that we're really close. I mean, actually we do have it. It does work perfectly, but it's got these two lines that are absolute garbage. So we wanna fix that, right? Because if we tried to add more features, this problem would probably in, uh, resurface, you know, in other ways, the fact that we're moving a board when we think we're not really. So we'll work on that. Maybe you'll notice it. Maybe I will see what happens.